William Hopley, your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I welcome you to another Two Hats special of community events. Let's look in and see what's really happening. can't find our CDs. Um, oh. <laughs> I like uh, did tell me that. That's right. Welcome to Lemon Weekly. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Laurent Landis and the late Patty Fink. And if it's Lady Gaga Sunday, it must be Plush Gaga Drive and our guest must be Candy Gaga Markham. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> it's Super Bowl Sunday. It is? Yeah. No, no, no. There's a Lady Gaga concert. I know. And the Pre game the the pre concert show is going to be a football game. I understand between two East Coast teams. Who cares? And, yeah, that's gay speak. Yeah, for us, uh, some of us, we really want to see the football game. For sure, the women do. <laughs> I, maybe I'm a I'm a lesbian today. Yes, you are. I'm a lesbian today. <laughs> are you a lesbian today, Patty? I'm going to try to be. I don't keep up with football all that much. Mm -hmm. I do know the political dynamics, but about the game today, though. And it's kind of big. But yes, it is. Yeah. Um, are you rooting for the team? The two teams playing are the Cheaters from New England, no, uh, no, whose no, quarterback no, no. Uh, is good friends and was out uh, campaigning for Trump. Yep. And Atlanta, I which is home of John Lewis. So, yes. uh, oh, yes. I didn't even put that connection and, in there. And then the, and then the third, um, the third kind of dynamic going on is the um, New Orleans fans who have, are refugees in Houston. Um, so, oh, that's true. From the hurricane, from right. the hurricane, right? And they are our rivals with the Falcons, <laughs> but they're not going to root for the Trump team. So, who are they rooting for? The Cowboys? They're already you no. Know, they're just they're just out, <laughs> they're outside the stadium right now, picketing, oh, or, like okay. protesting yes. Trump. They so, are. yeah, protesting so Trump. The, the, the team that really should and Candy is wearing the shirt, the Cowboys shirt, because. That's who should be in the Super Bowl Absolutely. since they had not just the best, they weren't just the best team this season, they also had their best season in their history. Yes. So that's who should be in the Super yep. Bowl. Absolutely. But that's just my opinion. It is the one day that I know anything about football <laughs> other than that. We've been debating it all morning. I'm impressed. <laughs> it is. And the ads are going to be fantastic. And the concert should be wonderful. And I do want to tell a little bit something about Lady Gaga later on the show. Okay. It is Pledge Drive. Our number is 942-647-1893. And uh, give us a call. Josh is there standing by. Um, <laughs> uh, this is the station. And you know, like the rabbi said, if you were listening just before the show started, oldest show on the station. And I'm assuming oldest. There are like four or five shows that started at the beginning, but ours was on the first day the station went on the air, so that makes us the oldest, I guess. Yeah. Um, How long has that poker show been on? Uh, it's, poker show hasn't been on in like five years. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. It's been gone for a while. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> How long has that poker show not been on? Five years. <laughs> yeah, that's but Lambs of Weekly <laughs> is one show. At, you know, at the time the station started, uh, they came to Dallas Gay and Lesbian Alliance, asked uh, DGA, it was called at the time, uh, to do a show. And they started doing a show, kind of inventing LGBT radio. Um, and this station really has stood behind us. You know how much this station stands behind us? Yesterday there was a march down Cedar Springs, started at Resource Center. Uh, the theme of it was we're not going back. Right. We're, we're not giving up rights that we worked for and earned earned and deserve thank you all those words mm -hmm. were not giving them up who was there it wasn't the station manager from that other station who's asking for your money it was the station manager from KNON who was there marching with everybody because because this is the station that believes in your rights too so That's give us wonderful. a call 972-647-1893 I mean when Dave was there yesterday. 
any question that this is the station that has been working for your rights. Any question out the window. Right. You know, I can't say more about that. Um, so give us a call, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. We do have one special um, giveaway this time. A giveaway, it's for a $500 pledge. But it's uh, it'll get you an Elite Music Sponsorship bonus pack that includes one pair of tickets for Brian Ferry, uh, who will be performing with Ju- Judith Owen on Saturday, March 18th at Verizon Theater, 1001 Performance Place in Grand Prairie. Um, what the uh, Elite Sponsor Package gives you is two tickets to every Cano and benefit for a year, plus two Cano and T-shirts to show off at Cano and events. So we have like 40 events a year. You'll have tickets waiting at the door for you at every single one of those. <clears throat> plus those tickets to Brian Ferry at uh, Verizon Music Theater, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. We're not anywhere near our goal yet, so we need you to give us a call. And um, we actually had a very good, looks like, beginning of the pledge drive for the first couple of days. Um, but give us a call. Yeah. Um, Again, that number is 972-647-1893. just wanted to make a mention again to our audience that we're just now coming up on one year being in this building. Wow. And um, it, it, it's nice, but the rent has increased, um, mm-hmm. just like everything else has increased. So uh, we still need your support um, to keep up the rent. It's not free. So give us a call at 972-647-1893. Um, you know, one of the things, uh, Candy Markham is our guest, and she is a community counselor. So what we want to talk about is what's going on and how it affects people. Um, you know, U- Uber's CEO this week, uh, he resigned from Trump's business council after about 200,000 people removed the app. He, he found that being part of Trump's business council wasn't going to be good for business. Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, they dropped Ivanka Trump's line. Fine. So those are things that doesn't sound like Trump is going to be very good for business. But Candy is a counselor. How's business, Candy? Couldn't be better. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that the saddest? It's only but, been two weeks and we've looked at all the stress. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you. I mean, it's been stress ever since he, he won the election. In November, uh, and and people are really being affected by this emotionally. They're having trouble sleeping. Mm-hmm. They're having trouble concentrating. Um, they're full of fear of what will happen to them. And it's and it's not just my gay and lesbian. Uh, no, clients. not at all. People are really, really worried, and uh, you know that's an unfortunate thing for them. Uh, but it is good for business. <laughs> but, you know, I just, I normalize it for them. It's like, so you're in touch with your feelings because that's what's going on. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was before he, you know, he started his two weeks of executive orders. Do, do, you know? do you think that's what p- people mean, some of um, his supporters um, mean when they say, you know, suck it up and move on, you know, don't stress, you know, Quit being so mad about it. We weren't this upset when Obama um, won. We just moved on. And and then when I hear that, I get I get upset. But I do too. I but, don't have an answer for that. But at the same time, to some degree, I guess we do have to suck it up. You don't have to accept it. But how do you compartmentalize that emotion? Yeah. yeah. Well. Um, Patty said she had an answer. Okay. Um, I mean, of course, I have one, too, but when, Patty... <laughs> when people say that that um, they sucked it up for President Obama, well, President Obama wasn't out to get mm-hmm. any entire group of people in our society. It's true. He wasn't out to get Muslims. He wasn't out to get white people. He wasn't out to get LGBT people. He was out to get their guns. <laughs> and, and nobody... No, those guns were never taken. And those guns were never taken. For, Still waiting for him and Jimmy Carter to come take their You're prize. Right, right. No, he wasn't, Never happened. He, was, he wasn't threatening. I, I, I also have heard that it's not just Trump supporters who say move on with it. It's Hillary supporters, too. Mm. Um, I've not heard they're, that. They're ready, they're ready to go on to the next step, which is what do we do? Which is impeachment. 
No, I mean, it could be, but no, then you have be, pants, yeah. and I, I don't see that as a good alternative, personally. Uh, I have thought I, on that, too. But I think it is about um, taking this energy and taking this angst and turning it into action. Right. I think that would be the healthy thing to do. Oh, it would help people tremendously deal with that, because you feel helpless. Well, it, but in freezing cold yesterday... 700 people turned out to march. That is wonderful. That is wonderful. I mean, it, and it was 699 cold marched, and I followed them in my car. He said he marched in his car. <laughs> because it was cold. Yeah. Because I was taking pictures along the route. Now, Aaron, call, you, Aaron called him a wimp. What were you going to say about Pence? I was, I was saying that if it came to pass that Trump was impeached and it would go to Pence and as you were saying earlier that the kind of the natural thing is oh he's horrible but imagine the situation that we would be in in that moment if a, the first president of the United States was ever removed by impeachment removed from office um, I think he would be pretty gutted in terms of um, feeling emboldened or I'm going to come out fighting kind of thing um, because the power of Congress would have acted you know, I, for me, I don't like to look at impeachment. I don't. I don't like that. What I like is for 2018, for us to have more people elected in into the House, into the Senate. Uh, I think that's the way to use our energy. Uh, impeachment has happened once, hasn't it? Maybe twice. Twice, but not with removal on here. Right. Right. No right. removal. Yeah. Right. No, so no removal. Why, why are we hanging our hat on that? Let's do something that that has happened. Let's try to turn the Senate and, and the House um, Democrat. Then it's really hard to get anything done. Look at Obama. He, he will tell you that. Um, and let's pray that those friends of ours on the Supreme Court live four years or more so that it doesn't, it doesn't shift the balance of the Supreme Court. To me, those are the two things we should be looking at. I, I agree, but... I. I'm fine with impeachment. I, I guess I'm having a Malcolm X moment. By any means necessary, he yeah. needs to be gone. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, when people are concerned about, um, remember when, when um, after 9-11, when Tina Fey did the, we couldn't, can be more alert, bitch. I don't know if right. I can say that on the air. But, uh -huh. you know, about the, about the color-coded alerts, national alerts. Um, I do think a lot of people are um, anxious because they don't want to normalize this president. Exactly. And anything he does, he lies. I mean, all of these things, these basic things that are happening daily, hourly from the, from this White House um, are things you don't want your kids to follow. You don't want to emulate that. Um, and we can't normalize that. And I think that's a stress to say, well, I can't protest everything. But I can't no let this become normal either. And if we just let it slack, it's going to become normal. And that's the worst no, thing we can do. I don't do. think we can let it slack. Okay, one thing that you just said, um, that parents don't want their kids. Lots of parents voted for him after hearing that horrible tape and what Trump said he actually thinks about women. Candy. And what he claims he actually did. And what he claims he did. I mean, it, it was taken right. this you know, isn't, candidly. This isn't and, rumor. Right. Yeah. yeah. So we have that video. How, what's the explanation, Candy, of parents actually voting for him, using him as a role model, and reconciling that with that video? They they probably will say uh, it happens in the Democratic side, too. Look at Clinton. They'll try to, as you said, normalize it and say that's not what's important. What's important is him keeping us safe. And I, I, I think he's changed. That was a long time ago. And I think he likes women. Look how fond he is of his daughter. For me, a little too fond. Uh -huh. but a little too fond for a lot of people. Uh, that's, that's how they do it. They turn it around. And, you know, it's, an, it's a media ploy. It's just one more way that the media tries to make him look bad. And they're, they're very serious when they say all this. They believe it. That he's not as bad as the media portrays him to be, even if there was a tape. That was a long time ago. Well, it, it was uh, just locker room. Yeah, that's, that's the other pass that they've given. It's just locker room banter, really. Yeah, that's not true. That is not true. So what do you, I mean, you know, part of what we were discussing before the show is that there's a still deep divide and some very personal relationships, not just between parties, but actually between friends, family, who thought that 
one side or the other thought a certain way and when they found out that certain individuals vo- supported and voted for Trump, you know, those heels still have those those wounds still haven't healed and I don't know if they will. How how, how do we make that that mend or, you know, come back in together? Well, I, I think um a way that you could do it. And I don't I don't know for you, I mean, you're really hurt. And I can well, see that. Yeah, it's, it's just not me. I mean, I have some friends who talk about their families. I mean, I, I can't, I'm not going to say her name, but uh, one person hasn't spoken to her mother. Yeah. Hasn't spoken to her mother since the election yeah. because it, she's so disgusted by it. I, th- I think what you do, what you can do, if you, if you can get your head around it, uh, is to understand that these people have a lot in common with you. They vote, all right? Uh, They care about their country. Uh, They're patriots. All the things that we are. And whatever their number one and number two reasons for voting for Trump were, they didn't factor in us. We weren't one or two. Bigotry wasn't a deal breaker. It was not, Patty. And uh-uh. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up th- that way that we weren't a, we weren't a deal breaker or we, they didn't vote for us or they didn't well, keep us in I, mind. I think maybe but, the top ten, but not the top two. But a lot of us, we tried to not try. We did inform them. We did inform them and say, "Hey, X, Y, and Z. This is what your candidate has supported in the past and has said in the past regarding us." Specifically, the LGBT community, and they still gave them a pass. That's hard to get by. They didn't believe it. I guess they didn't. They didn't believe it, and they wanted to believe what they believed. You're informing them, but it didn't influence them. Enough. Uh, apparently not. Because they think, look how far you've come. No one's going to take away your rights. I think that's erroneous to think that, but I think mm-hmm. that's how they justify what they did, it wasn't a vote to hurt you, Laron and Patty and Candy and David and well, Chris. Partially because all of us are okay. Yeah, you know, we're married. Four, four of us were married. Yeah. Of course, Josh, poor Josh over here is not. But uh, well, I bet he has to beat him off with a stick. <laughs> and that's what he always does. And that's it's like choosing. That's what How you're do you choose, wrong. You know? But but all of us here are Which okay. One? We all we all have jobs. We're we're all doing okay. Right. And they look at us and they say, "Okay, well, what Obama did took care of you. It took care of those problems." And I'm not saying that that's right, Patty. I'm saying that they're looking at us that way and didn't factor in, not for mean-spirited reasons. No, but so they could vote for whom they wanted to vote for. But They wanted to vote for Trump. And they, they would make up all kinds of yes. crap to support their yes. disbelief. Yes. Because I'll tell you, I had numerous very right-wing conservative friends that I don't hang with much um, who are trying to tell me that he's that Trump was pro LGBT. Yes, yes. Really? So at the convention in Cleveland, we see Peter Thiel, um, who to me is like the only the only acceptable gay they could all clap for was a white billionaire. You know, I mean that's that's who they clap for. Um, but the only thing he oh he's the first president Republican president to mention LGBT at his acceptance speech. Well, you know how he mentioned us. He said we shouldn't die from terrorism that's so pro LGBT thank you for not thinking we should die from a terror in a terrorist attack and ding that's so pro LGBT and it's and and that's his that's his platform his LGBT platform we should not you know be killed in a terrorist attack that's the extent of it well that's his that's his focus is safety that's his so when they when they tell me and if you're listening out there you know, that's his platform. He is not pro LG. And you're listening to Latin the Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Laron Landis and Potty Math, uh, Patty Fink. <laughs> Our guest today is uh, Candy Markham. It is Pledge Drive. Give us a call, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Need a couple more calls uh, to help us make our goal for this show. Uh, for this week and for our total goal, uh, show goal. So give us a call, 972-647-1893. You bring kazoos next week. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I'll find the CDs. I probably left them home. 
I left all of our theme song music and all that home this week. Uh, I think it's home. I don't remember what happened. Josh left the studio a few minutes early. And it was Josh's fault. No, it was my fault because I said, don't worry, go ahead. He was in a rush. Go ahead and I'll put everything away. And I didn't. Uh, I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Laurent Landis and the late Patty Fink. Our guest is, as always, on the first Pledge Drive Super Bowl week of the year, um, Candy Markham, and we're talking about um, Mr. Trump and what he's doing to people. But first, it is Pledge Drive, 972-647-1893. If you're listening on the web or listening uh, and, and are out of uh, town, because we had several people who came on our Facebook page today and said, oh, Candy's on, I'm listening from Atlanta, uh, and we'll be listening online today. But if you're listening online, if you're listening to the show later, because uh, it's podcast later, uh, you can always go to canon.org and just click on the uh, pledge button, and you can uh, pledge to the show that way and just put in the Lambda Weekly or the Gay Show or something like that. Uh, 972-647-1893. If you want to give us a call and pledge that way, that's 972-647-1893. And you know you, what we... we no, no, I'm just blowing over words today. You know what we're worth. You tell us all the time when we see you, we get... We get your comments. Yeah, I know what you're worth, Laurent. Uh, <laughs> you can't. You, you can't afford that. <laughs> but you know, we have local programming. When we say it, we really mean it. Everything here, we don't have like a, 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 a directive from the station manager what we can and can't talk about. We book our own guests. Um, this is a local insight to what we think about what's yeah. going on in our community. I want to say it again. What we can talk about and what our station manager would say about it. Yesterday there was a march. 700 people showed up and it was uh, a march to not take away the rights that we've spent years to gain. Right. And our station manager was there. That's wonderful. It wasn't just that, though. Our march was in sol solidarity with all the other people sure. being targeted. Women, Muslims... Um, immigrants, documented and undocumented, our, our march was for everyone mm -hmm. to say we're all in this together. Well, so, and and the um, Monday uh, evening rally downtown that was for immigrants was put together by somebody from Congregation Beth Elbana. So you know the gay community is there with the rest of the community. Solidarity, we're yeah. all there together and that was one theme yesterday of course that we all have to work together. But it is pledge drive as we were saying. We keep so, having Yeah, so I was, I was gonna say if you appreciate all of that inclusion and diversity, diversity of opinion is all right here at Kano Win. Uh, show your support. Give us a call at 972-647-1893. Again and we have lots of pledge premiums for a forty dollar pledge. Um our no, the shopping bags are for a $50 pledge. Baby. $50 pledge. And uh, let me tell you, the KNON Canvas shopping bags are wonderful. I had to order another one. You know why? Because we're always fighting over, uh, no, they're in the car. No, they're not in the car. We need extra ones for the car <laughs> so that when we're out, we can just use <laughs> they them. They are the best. Them. They're heavy, heavy canvas. <clears throat> the strap is long enough to go over your shoulder so you can carry it in other bags. And you can put heavy stuff in there if you have cans or coffee mm -hmm. or you know, whatever, laundry detergent. You can sling that over your shoulder and carry all your groceries in at one time. I love that. I do, too. 972-647-1893. Um, <laughs> I know. 33 and a half years we've been doing this for quarterly for three weeks. I still cannot remember that phone number. 972-647-1893. When I'm hesitating, it's because I'm not looking at the board where the number is written nice and large so I can even see it without my glasses. 972-647-1893. Give us a call. We're talking to Candy Markham today, as we always do the first day of Pledge Drive. That's right. Mm -hmm. um, and we're talking about how normally uh, when a president is in office, the president ages. In this case, it's the entire country that's aging very, very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen anything like this? Where no, there's a, never been anything like this. You know, after Ann Richards left office, we weren't real thrilled with the new governor. But it was nothing like this. Yeah, there's never been anything like this. Mm -hmm. Same thing when, when Bush... One, I remember when he won um, uh, going against uh, uh, Kerry. The second time, we thought we'd be able to get him out by then. 
It was, st- but it still wasn't anything like this. People were <laughs> felt <laughs> deflated then, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yes. And what happened with that? Because I'm sure for a while you saw, especially people who were active in the campaign. I'm sure they came to you then too. How did that play out? You know, uh, if you all remember, I'm thinking about the first time Bush ran. Um, of course, he didn't get the popular vote. Nope, did not. Just like uh, Trump didn't. And that it was weeks. You know, the counting of the chads and all of that. Uh, and then the Supreme Court. And there's, yeah. There's just a lot of, of uh, angst about it. There was a lot of anger about it. Um, and I think when it finally came out and they gave it to Bush, I think people were just deflated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think they had worked really, really hard and, and longer than when the election, the voting was. Um, and, you know, not not long after that, they had the, the 9-11 uh, in New York uh, that uh, killed all those people in the, in the tower. And I think we were real stunned by that and, um, and felt very patriotic. I, I don't think there was any, not much animus toward Bush. I remember that aircraft carrier, whatever that, what did that sign say? Oh, mission, mission, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, and of course we're still over there. But um, I think uh, I think Obama, our last president, really inspired a lot of people. Really got a lot of people to vote who had never voted before. Got a lot of new people involved in, in the political process. I think it was a wonderful thing. Uh, for the country and certainly for the Democratic Party, um, and I just have to say Hillary didn't didn't have that. She didn't have that same allure, though. I, you know, was did you Hillary see her fan. in person at all? No, uh-uh. I saw her in person. Did you see her in I've person? Seen her in person, many times. And uh, Lauren, did you see her in person? Not this election. Okay, so Candy, you said didn't wasn't inspiring. Lauren, you saw her on TV. No. I saw her in person years ago. But when, you agreed with her, everything she said? Yeah. Okay, what was your impression of her in person? I thought she was dynamic, and I thought she was very present. And I met her, and I was like, wow, why doesn't this come across on TV? She was delightful. She was uh, she, funny. She was funny. She was personable. She, she was animated. Why didn't that come across on TV? And it didn't. It just didn't. Mm. It would have, you know, had, had that come across to just a few thousand more people, the election would have, you know, a few thousand people in the right place. It would, no, mm, different person, know. different person. I, 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 I think th- there's been a snowball effect of creating this dialogue to hate Hillary Clinton for so long. She could have come across as Mother Teresa, and people still wouldn't have voted for well, her. Have voted I for went Mother to the Teresa. doctor. Yeah. I went to the doctor Tuesday. And my doctor is is was a big Hillary supporter um, and uh, and a lesbian, um, and her family nurse practitioner. Um, we got we started talking because I had my equality, marriage equality T shirt on with the mm-hmm. White House and rainbow, and we started talking. I said I don't like the guy in there now, and she just started saying, "Well, he's better than Hillary." And you know really? they were just the That's, same yeah. thing. They were just exactly alike. No, they, no yeah. Oh, my blood pressure just skyrocketed. <laughs> I'm in the doctor's office. I oh, can't even wow. think what I'm here for. Wow. <laughs> it's shocking. That's it really is. Shocking. Was, it I is shocking. Just so put out. Yes, yeah, so I don't. So she sends me down the hall to get some blood work, and the phlebotomist is taking my blood, and she says, oh, did you go to the march? Because my shirt, you know, I had the same shirt on. Uh-huh. And um, I said, no, I went, to, I, I went to the one in Austin, not in D.C., although we'd planned to go to D.C., and she, was, she said, well, our doctor went to D.C. for all of us. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and so I thought, okay. You so, need a new doctor's office, Penny. <laughs> no, no, no. She said she went to she went to the march in D.C. for the whole office. Oh, got you, got office. you. I, and so I was like, oh, of course she did, you know. Except we've got to have a conversation about <laughs> about that nurse but practitioner. Has, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I, so I, I don't know. It's crazy people even think that because I, I don't think that had anything to the way she had anything to do with the way she, how she came across. She did. Some people just have their minds made up. They didn't like her. It's the same thing. They want with, to change. It's, it's, it's the Obama same thing. Been with, in there eight years with, uh, with, as a black man, and now here was a woman. And, and right. this week, a poll comes out. Who do the majority of people in this country want as president? Now they want Obama as president. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like when when Gore ran. 
I remember the thing that I used to hear all the time, and I was just like baffled beyond belief. It's not that they didn't like Gore. They thought he was too smart. And Bush was somebody that they wanted to go have a beer with. Okay, that's fine. I don't want to vote for somebody who I want to go have a beer with. I do want to vote for somebody who's smarter than me, a lot smarter than me. Which is why I would never vote for you. Exactly. Speaking of voting for people, so I mean, I think it's the same thing that happened to Hillary. Speaking of voting for stations. It is Pledge Drive. It is. Uh, and give us a call, 972-647-1893. Um, on February 26th, it's KNON 16th Annual Mardi Gras Gumbo Party. Uh, on that Sunday, February 26th, Doors and Gumbo at 4 p.m., Music at 5 p.m., because you can't have gumbo, I guess, while you're listening to the music. But the gumbo's at 4, the music's at 5. It's at Poor David's Pub at 1313 South Lamar. <laughs> Returning three-time uh, champ chef Chris Lalonde from El Centro's Culinary Arts Program, along with Keith Buttons Hicks from uh, from Buttons. Uh, Ivan Pugh from uh, B- Bucky Moonshine's uh, Rodelio for a whole bunch of them are gonna, lots of food there uh, and that's February 26th anyway live music from uh, Grammy Award winner from Louisiana Chubby Carrier and the Bayou Swamp Swamp Band plus JB and the Zydeco Posse if you've been to the Gumbo uh, Fest before you've been petty right? Oh yeah 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 lots of fun and we, it's, it has a great <laughs> sign off by an authentic NOLA native Aaron thinks it's fantastic the food's been great the music it, it, and it always is. So we have two pairs of uh, VIP tickets, which gives you early entry. A uh, hundred dollars gets you two tickets, or a hundred twenty-five dollars gets you a pair of tickets and a T-shirt. Um, give us a call nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. So that's a full day of music or a full evening of music plus all the gumbo that you could possibly eat uh, for $100 for the two tickets, 972-647-1893. Have you been, Josh? You're from Louisiana. Oh, you haven't been. Okay. Um, Well, now is your chance. Now is his chance. 972-647-1893. Give us a call. The phones were ringing at the beginning of the show. They're not ringing now. Uh, 972-647-1893. We are talking to community counselor um, Candy Markham, uh, and we're talking about the Trump effect. Um, you know, I have a story also about before you were saying, uh, Patty, that uh, people were saying, oh, well, in the past he has said such and such. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed George Takei. He was here on Thursday, and he was fabulous. Great, great appearance. In, in he, he, he was. He was great. great. So I got to interview him ahead of time. And um, we, we were talking a little bit about uh, he had been a, uh, a, a a contestant on The Celebrity Apprentice a few years ago. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I remember that. The actor? Yeah. 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 I remember so, when he did that. Right. Not too. He made it to the fourth show. Uh, and, and then he got fired by Trump. But anyway, um, so he said Trump had come out, said something about not supporting same-sex marriage. And Trump knew Brad and George as a married couple already. Uh, you know, and, and so he, he said, you know, I want to take Trump out. This was before he's running for office. I want to take him out to dinner and let's discuss this. So George's people, which would be Brad, spent months, he said, trying to get through to Trump's people to arrange a dinner. Finally, they arranged it. They go out to dinner. And the first thing, Trump's getting to the table and, you know, how are you? And they're shaking hands. And um, he said, you know, I I was just at a gay wedding. It was just great. It was, you know, real bigly, that kind of thing. You know, he said, (laughs) great wedding. So George says... So why don't you support same-sex marriage? And he said, you know, marriage is a commitment between two people. And Trump's answer, now this is a personal conversation, Trump's answer was, yeah, but you have to add in between a man and a woman. So that's what he thinks of same-sex marriage on a very personal, you know, not broadcasting it to everybody basis. Has to be between a man. He is not a supporter of same-sex marriage. This is the guy who has had... Five kids by three different baby mamas. Yep. Yep. Right. Yeah. That's, let yeah. that soak in. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't know where <laughs> some of your, these supporters get that he supports marriage equality. No, he doesn't. He, doesn't. he never has. He or doesn't. that these people are so sanctified in their marriages. Right. You know? I mean, and another one that was a big and during the campaign was Newt Gingrich. I mean, come on. Get you know, and, and back in the day... That was uh, a death knell for someone running for office if you had uh, 
were on a second or third marriage and a few had affairs. Right. But it did not touch him. Did no, and in fact, him. they were all over Hillary for not leaving Bill. Right. When she had been faithful in her marriage to the same man for 40 years. Right. That meant nothing to them. Well, you're saying he's on his third marriage. Is he? I mean, if Brian and I weren't living together, yeah, we have a piece of paper, but I wouldn't consider us married particularly. She's living in New York. He's living in Washington. Candy, you're the counselor. What kind of marriage? Do you, do you talk to many people who have that kind of marriage? I talk to people who would like to have that kind of marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. I bet you do. <laughs> Those are the ones that come see me. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I have to say that my point of view on that is that anything works. Whatever you decide between the two of you, if it works, it works. I agree. She has a very good reason to stay in New York. That child is 10 years old. You know, he looks much older than that to me. He's so tall. But anyway, he's only 10. He's usually very well dressed, too. You know, it, like in a jacket and tie. So yes. I think that, that makes, makes a 10-year-old look, look a little yeah. bit older. Yeah. And, and one thing, I'm not saying anything about him other than I, I think he's a cute kid. Yes. So. But I'm saying that that is a wonderful reason for her to stay there and let mm-hmm. him stay in his school. Uh, and they are in Key Largo together this weekend. Oh, did she go? They showed a picture of her. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. He's uh, on vacation already. Notice. Well, he's well, worked real hard these last two weeks. <laughs> those tiny hands have been signing 18 signed executive a lot of orders. Okay. But anyway, no, I don't see anything wrong with them living in two different places because um, I think if they had their druthers, they would live together. Um, the thing that's interesting, though, that people are commenting on is that he is using his daughter, Ivanka, um, as kind of a surrogate first lady. Yeah. She's showing up uh, in, in meetings that I don't think a first lady would go to. She's showing up uh, when he goes to visit other countries. It's really rather interesting. But I don't want to say anything really negative about Ivanka because, um, number one, I have a pair of her shoes. But number two, um, they're flats and they're red um, patent leather. They're fabulous. But um, she and her husband were talking Trump into, you know, let the gay thing be. Leave it do alone. Do you believe that? I yeah. do believe that. I, do you know Actually, you know I what? I'm, I'm, I'm with uh, Candy on that because only because I've heard her. I have heard her in an interview say that she, this was way before the election, that Ivanka herself said that she supports gay marriage and she differed with her father on it and she said, I'm doing my best to talk to him. She did yeah, say I, that. I, I don't believe it for now. another very basic fundamental that. reason. I don't trust her. She's Jewish, so oh, I didn't say I trusted her. Well, that's what I'm thinking. The husband, too. What, what is his name? Uh, Jared, Jared Kushner. Kushner. Uh, you know, I, I believe that, you know, they're young enough to be hip enough to understand love is love. But they're well, Jewish. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah. we don't have a problem with same-sex marriage in Judaism. But to go back to the one thing you said, Candy, as far as you know, you don't have a problem with them living in separate places. Personally, I don't. That's their personal business. But I do have a problem because now he is the president, and they would have thrown a fit if Michelle and Obama. Oh yeah, and, and I they this, threw a fit when her mother moved into when the her White mother, House and, with them. And as far as having little kids, well, they had little kids too when he was uh, a <laughs> little kids. Little kids. That, they were already in school, so they had to, to switch schools. That people give him a lot of leeway. They do. They do. It, Obama couldn't do any of this stuff. No, could not. It costs our government. Five hundred thousand dollars a day for Melania to stay in the Trump Tower in New York every day. And why is that? A lot of people don't understand why. Uh, Secret Service, right? Security, yeah, in New York, part of Manhattan. Well, more than that, in New York, because the way they're blocking it off, it's also blocking off part of Fifth Avenue, and so traffic jams. He's not in the country somewhere. He's in the city. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three is our number. It is Pledge Drive, and uh, Josh's are standing by for your calls. Unlike that other station, which I like to point out, where you're calling a foreign city and, and giving your pledge to people who don't care about you. 972-647-1893. We do care about you here at KNON, and KNON cares about our community. Our yep. station manager was there yesterday at the march uh, to not give back our rights. You know, usually a march is for something. This it is. is. This it is. was for solidarity. Well, that's true. That's true. No, that but was I'm the saying, whole point. The but, whole point was solidarity. But, but I'm saying it, it's solidarity, but it's to protest things being taken away from us, not to gain things. You're not agreeing with me. 
just say, okay. It wasn't okay. a negative. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Good we'll stuff. be back with more right after this. You're listening to Lambda Weekly on 89.3 KNON FM. I'm Dave Taffet here in the studio with Lauren Landis and the late Patty Fink. Our guest is Candy Markham, and it is Pledge Drive. Um, we have several special premiums. We do. Um, the KNON 16th Annual Mardi Gras Gumbo Party is going to be Sunday, February 26th. Uh, doors open and gumbo at 4 p.m., music at 5 at Poor David's Pub. And Poor David's Pub is at 1313 South Lamar. Um, so you can get $100 gets you two tickets or $125 gets a pair of tickets and a T-shirt. So that's a pretty good deal. Um, you can have two, uh, two pairs of um, general admission tickets for the pledge. $50 gets you two tickets, and $75 gets you a pair of tickets and a T-shirt. So sign up. Give us a call, 972-647-1893. And we have, we've talked about this many times. I think it's probably one of the best deals that we offer here at KNON, and that is our Elite Music Sponsorship Bonus Pack. And it's only $500. Now, what it is is you buy this package, you get two tickets to every single event we have for the entire year. That is you, you, that's, you're practically getting, I don't know how many concerts for free. Um, if you, just any standard concert you go to these days, tickets alone at the minimum is maybe a hundred, 125 bucks. And those are nosebleed seats. And then when you add in the parking and food for a night out, you already got $500 right there. Yeah. So for, um, for $500 for a whole year of two tickets for every show, Worth it, worth it, worth e- it. Even if you only go to five of those shows. It, exactly. It, it's food and tickets and exactly. more than pays and for it. And your names live on the list. They do. You don't even have to worry about tickets. You just show up. Right. Cross me out. Check me off. I'm here. And for a $40 pledge, we have our KNON t-shirts. You see that black t-shirt up there? You know what? KNON's retiring its station color, which is black. <laughs> We're retiring what? black t-shirts. What? Apparently, after this... Pledge Drive will be having T-shirts and other colors. So if you don't have your black KNON T-shirt, Get give us now. a call nine seven two six four seven. I need to rack up. Hmm? I need to rack up on a few of those. Yeah, then. you do. Uh, Get them a pledge uh, form nine seven two six four seven one eight nine three. Give us a call. Um, one way that you can pledge also is is with a KNON bank draft. Call us now. Tell us you'd like to start a bank draft. Uh, you can do it with a checking or a savings account, and an automatic monthly draft will occur from your account. You can tell us what day of the month you want it on. Um, it, it's fast. It's easy. It can be for any dollar amount uh, that, that you like. So give us a call. Somebody from the station will call you back during the week to get the checking account information that you don't give to us. You give to a secure station personnel person. 972-647-1893. Uh, and our guest, as always, on first day of Pledge Drive is Candy Markham. Uh, and we're just talking about how this... How the inauguration, the, when did you see an uptick, Candy, in people oh, coming right, to you right, right away? Right after the election. But I, want, I wanted to say something uh, about the pledge drive. There are still many, many people uh, who are learning about their sexual orientation, who don't have any place to go to talk about it. This show helps a lot of people. Uh, I think it gives them a lot of resources. Uh, to go get help, to learn more about it. Uh, and I, I think, I do anyway, kind of take for granted that everybody's fine coming out and everybody's okay with it, but but they're not, and it's difficult. So I think this radio show helps a lot of people on that level. Thank you. I think it does too. Uh, people get really depressed, and so it's, you know, saving a life. Mm-hmm. It's very we, important. We cannot forget, too, that there are many who live in a home environment, especially young people, where they may not be safe if they came out. Um, and, and that's pretty true. Um, maybe not so much in the heart of Dallas where LGBT issues are discussed a lot and lots of people are very supportive, but in outlying areas around the, the, the city and for those listening online anywhere you might be, it's, a, it's an important thing. You know, when we first started this, well, when I first started this show, guys, 17, 18 years ago, whatever, yeah. <laughs> um, we did used to hear, we used to go to uh, more uh, youth events like the, uh, the gay prom that they used to have. And I, we have been told 
uh, several times to, yeah, they listened on the low. They, you yeah. know, uh, had their okay. headphones on where their parents or something couldn't hear. But it was it was something positive they had never heard. Mm-hmm. You know, so, yeah. I just uh, wanted to say that. Yeah, and, and I yeah. appreciate that. Um, you know, talking about kids coming out, uh, r- the week after the election, I was talking to a GSA, a Gay Straight Alliance, uh, at one of the big Dallas high schools. And what we had planned, because it was planned before the election that I was going to come speak, that was out the window. I mean... There were kids who were nervous because some of them were dreamers, some of them, you know, a, a whole variety of different different reasons in addition to the gay thing. Uh, and, and they were upset. And I didn't even know what to say to them. What are some of the things that you would say to some of these kids? I think I would say to them, tell me how, how, it, how it shows up. And that's where I hear about the I have trouble sleeping. Uh, I'm... I'm uh, I'm having trouble concentrating. Uh, I, I find that I'm irritable with people. Um, so I, I like to, to see those sim- symptoms so that we can talk more about how it really does impact us. So, and you're talking about I'm irritable with people, not like Patty normally is, but like um, <laughs> if this is a new thing. Uh, maybe more than about Patty normally. <laughs> Patty is not that way. Patty's sweet and has to deal with you too. I'm a sweet one. <laughs> you are the sweet one. But I also, you know, try to normalize it to say these are feelings that are valid and legitimate and you get to have them. And if you don't deal with them and you push them down, then they're going to come out in awkward ways when Mm -hmm. you don't mean to be yelling at that person or you don't want to cry at work because there's no crying at work. You know, and and so to give them permission to be sad, to Mm -hmm. give them permission to be scared, uh, to to visit with people that will be supportive of that because there will be some who, who will say get over it, move on well they're not ready, they're not there and they get to be where they are until they're not there anymore I, but some of these kids, you know, when I've spoken to this group before uh, some of the problems were things like uh, other kids are really mean to me in church and to one, to one girl who was about 16 I said you know what when they point their finger at you, point you're, you're, and this was a kid, you could tell she was strong, but not with all kinds of kids coming at her in church. Sure. I said, you're strong, point your finger right back and tell her, uh, you know, how dare you judge me. And just remember, in a year and a half, you'll be old enough, you can go to a church that's not going to judge you that way. But the, this time it was kids who, I'm worried I'm going to get deported to a place that I've never been before. You know, I have a, right. a, a couple of situations like that. Uh, one is, um, I have some clients that work for the EPA. Well, they just got a cabinet person <coughs> who has sued the EPA nine times or something. Not a very friendly and cabinet. And said he wanted to do away with it. And the bill was actually introduced um, just yesterday, day before, to terminate the Environmental Protection Agency. I know. I mean, and, wow. and these are... are you know, this person I'm thinking of has worked for them for 30 years. I mean, it's really, it's really threatening. Yeah. Uh, and so they have every right to feel the feelings they're feeling. Then there's there's folks that um, that I have that are not um, naturalized citizens. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, they, and they don't have a green card. Maybe they have a B2. Do y'all know what that is? A, a work mm-hmm. visa. Mm-hmm. Um, and if they get in any kind of trouble at school or any kind of trouble with, with bad people. You know, people take advantage of people. Not by, by and large, people are good. But there are some bad ones that know that you can't go to the police. So I'm going to do some bad things to you. I'm going to steal your money or I'm going to do this or that. And they don't have any recourse because they're, they're very aware right now that it is a dangerous time to to be a Muslim in the United States, uh, be an undocumented um, um, immigrant in the United States. It's a really scary time for them. To be brown or black, especially. Yes, and I don't. Country. And I don't say to them, "Well, you should just stand right up to that neighbor." I don't say that because I don't know what that neighbor's going to do. You know, what I say to them is get an attorney. Or, you know, I try to, to go that route. Mm-hmm. But it's but I do say to them that's very, very unfair. And we're we're the country of fairness. We were 
you know, built on fairness. We believe in fair play. We believe in treating people correctly. But there are people who know that and take advantage of those folks. And so I, I, I really feel for them. And I, I, I don't think anyone that I'm visiting with is hypersensitive or overreacting. Mm-hmm. I think it's very valid what's going on with them. I like to share with people, too, that it, they're not alone. Yes. More people voted against this president than voted for him. If you count all the people who voted for the other candidates, plus who vote for Hillary, right. it comes out to an, an enormous, overwhelming amount. It's like 15 million mm-hmm. votes uh, against him mm-hmm. than voted for him. And I, I think it's just really important. I've gotten um, and read on Facebook and, and gotten messages from, from fellow activists who've been doing activism for a very long time. They're having protest fatigue. Um, and we just see the, the longevity, the marathon of this that's needed. Um, and as Aaron said, it's not, a, it's not a sprint. It's not a marathon. It's a relay. Mm-hmm. That oh, that's was, a good way to look that's at the it. Way we I, need people. Yeah. We need, you know, yeah. that we have to take that breath. That's why I was saying when I, had, I spoke yesterday at the, at the event um, that we're holding a long note. And we, those of us who were in band and choir... Now that you have to you stagger your breathing. Stagger the breathing. Yep. And when someone needs to take a breath, know that there will be others who are holding that note. And it's you, a good way to put and it. And when you take a breath, no, you know, you you chime in when someone else needs to take a breath. Mm-hmm. And we're going to get through this because there we're not alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's exactly right. That's very good, Betty. I like that. Yeah, and that's one of the real values of having so many allies and um, forcing, in a way, these different groups to work together. Well, if there is an upside, that is the upside. Uh-huh. Yeah, I agree. Is that it is is bringing people together, you know, like-minded people who had not really worked together before, bring them together. On, a, on another note, I don't know if you all watched um, um, George Stephanopoulos today. I did not see him He today. was interviewing Pence. And he was talking about LGBT folks and and uh, where he was on that. And he said um, that the president and I do not believe in discriminating. So we are not going to discriminate against LGBTQ people. He said that LGBTQ. I thought, oh, my God. This is Pence. 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 It just rolled off his tongue. LGBTQ. I, I was just well. You shocked. know, maybe wow. he learned his lesson from you know what what went on in his home state. You know, maybe. I, I yes. Now that I believe him, it was just the LGBTQ thing that got my attention. Well, no, that is because <laughs> if we, extraordinary. If you ever heard, uh, if you ever heard Trump say LGBTQ, no. I mean he he's struggling with it hard. Like, yeah. this pitch just. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think he's learned anything. Some friends of mine from Indianapolis were uh-huh. down over the holidays mm-hmm. and. And uh, they said this man was forced into rescinding and recanting and whatever yeah, happened. He that, that. Yeah, oh. they, they said he has been horrible for the state. But, I mean, you can tell he's he's studying. Thank you, so much. Mm. you know, he's well, learning. And see, this is where when uh, you said, oh, but what about Pence? And I have some idea. I think Pence is more of the politician. And I say that in a good sense. I don't mean he's it. He's more in, polished. For um, sure. and, and that. Absolutely. He'll do some things that will work because he sees he, he sees what other people are saying as opposed to Trump, who I don't think cares one way he or the other. He doesn't want to offend people. Mm-hmm. Trump well, doesn't think, care. Th- I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, well, Pence, I think, you know, as bad as this record is, and he does have a record on our issues, yeah. um, as bad as it is, I would still prefer him over Trump also because, like Dave said, he is a traditional politician. He is more polished, like you said. He's an unquantity. Exactly. And he at least he knows the the art or the along, idea yeah. of compromise. So with, with Trump, there is no compromise, my way or the highway. So we actually have a question from from the the caller so the question is um why would why would this panel say that muslims are good friends when people in the areas that are banned um live in countries where they would kill homosexuals i i have lived in a, in a muslim country yes yeah. um not all not all muslims believe that and that's what so um, irritating that the Trump supporters have just glommed on to this lie that all 1.6 billion Muslims in the world are exactly like ISIS. 
I or exactly like dictators in their countries. That's it's, it's that's a lie. It's an outright lie. Well, not only that, I would like to post a question to the caller. Just replace the word Muslim with Christian. They don't like us either. Generally, they think we're you know we're an abomination, and a lot of them think we should be put to death. Do we hate all Christians? Absolutely not. Well, plus, even if it's part of the religion. Uh, or certain branches of the religion, Muslims who live here want to be Americans. Exactly. From the um, the rally on Monday at Thanksgiving Square, I have pictures of rabbis arm in arm with some uh, imams. At the uh, rally and the march yesterday, there were Muslims who were marching. Yes. In yep. a gay rally, they're not th th this that they're against us. We're against them. Well, I don't the, buy it. Here are the statistics: one in every four families has a gay member. And it doesn't matter what your religion is or what your race is. One in four. So um, I, don't, I don't believe that a state law trumps family love. Uh, I do believe that, that it's difficult for some families to come to grips with that, but they don't not love the person that's in there. And I think you're right, David, that, that the ones that come here... Um, they want to be here. For the same reason all of our families right. came here. It, it, we're all immigrants. Uh, really quick, I know we're coming at the end of the hour, but just more to, you know, to address that question. When Danny and I, our first house, God, that was 18 years ago or something like that, um, our neighbors, I mean, directly next door to us was a Muslim family, a young couple. They had a cute, uh, cute little boy at the time. They couldn't have been nicer to us. Yep. They spoke to us, yep. engaged in conversation. See, but what you're doing all the time. Us, we're humanizing people. We're exactly. getting to know people. We're not exactly. humanizing it, them like the, like, Exactly. And, and like I understand the question. So, I mean, but, so yeah, if I'm sure if we, and we never got into some big political or um, discussion about religion, and I'm sure if we had pushed, it probably would have said, yeah, according to our religion, homosexuality is a sin. I'm sure so, but at least they had the decency. They treated us like human beings, and we treated them like human beings. And one last time, it is Pledge Drive, 972-647-1893. That's 972-647-1893. Give us a call. Um, we got some real sad news this week that uh, um, John Earhart, who is Harriet Earhart's former state representative, Harriet Earhart's husband, passed away. Uh, the funeral is going to be on Saturday the 11th? Yes. At what time? Um, it's going to be at, it's a memorial service that will be uh, February 11th on Saturday at 3 p.m. at St. Matthew's Cathedral, 5100 Ross Avenue, and then afterwards at the Earhart Home. We love you, Harriet, and we certainly love Jack. Mm -hmm. yes. Harriet's been on our show a number of times. times. Uh, and for people who don't know her, she was probably the first state representative that was in Austin fighting for our rights. Mm -hmm. Besides Glenn Maxey. Uh, she, wasn't she there before, Glenn? They got there at the same, same time. time. Okay. Uh, they left at the same time. <laughs> uh, so it is Pledge Drive 972-647-1893. Candy, thank you very much for being with Thanks us again. Candy. Thanks, Candy. We'll see you the Thanks. first Sunday in May. I'll be there. Go Patriots. <laughs> this is William, hopefully your favorite videographer from Two Hats Publishing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please leave comments below or like follow or subscribe to us and get notices of all our videos. We love it even when you call.